let's consider a type of problem called Fermi problems. So a typical example of this would be, how many golf balls does it take to fill a Boeing 747? Now your first reaction on a problem like this is, how in the heck am I supposed to know how to do this? Well, it turns out answering questions like these is an important and useful skill for physicists to know. It was first popularized by the famous physicist Enrico Fermi. So there's a couple important skills that are useful in doing Fermi problems. The first important skill is rounding. So for Fermi questions, we just round our answer to the nearest power of 10 in scientific notation. So for some examples, consider the value and its Fermi answer to the nearest power of 10. So let's consider the value 600. We'd write that as 10 to the 3. 300 we write as 10 to the 2, and 50 we would write as 10 to the 2 as well. 4 we'd write as 10 to the 0, 0.3 is 10 to the minus 1, and 0.5 as 10 to the minus 0. So you can see we're rounding to the nearest power of 10 on all of these. The next skill is dimensional analysis. And so when we use dimensional analysis in Fermi problems, well, in general, what we want to do is we're just canceling out the appropriate units. So if we want to write 50 miles per second, in feet per second, then we use a conversion factor, cancel out factors of miles, and we get feet per second. So, uh, for example, if we wanted to apply this type of reasoning to the question above, namely how many golf balls does it take to fill a Boeing 747, what we would do is we'd use dimensional analysis to rewrite uh, or to write a expression for the answer that we're interested in. And so what we're interested in is the number of golf balls. And so what we think we're going to need is write that as the volume of a 747 over the volume of a golf ball. Now clearly in writing the expression like this, we see that the units will cancel out and the dimensions will cancel out, giving a, a pure number, the number of golf balls. This brings us to the next important skill, which is estimation. So we're going to need to estimate the quantities in Fermi problems to the nearest power of 10 in whatever the appropriate units are. So for example, I know that the radius of a golf ball is about an inch. If I write that in feet, that's about 10 to the minus 1 feet. So therefore, the volume of a golf ball, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed, well, forget about the 4 thirds pi, that's r cubed. So it gets me something like 10 to the minus 3 feet cubed for the volume of a golf ball. Similarly for uh, 747, I've never, I don't know anything about it, but the volume is going to be something like length times width times height, and I can estimate each of these. So the length of a 747, well, it can't be much more than a couple hundred feet. The width of, a, of the 747 is somewhere around 10 feet, and the height is somewhere around 10 feet of order. And so the volume of 747 will then be something like 10 to the 4 feet cubed. Again, we're just estimating to the nearest power of 10. So I can use these estimates in my dimensional analysis above. And so if I want to estimate now the number of golf balls, it's 10 to the 4 feet cubed over 10 to the minus 3 feet cubed, which gives me a factor of 10 to the 7 golf balls in a 747. If I use some actual numbers and look up the volume of a 747, uh, the volume of 747 is about 2.5 times 10 to the 4 feet cubed. And the regulation volume of a golf ball is about 1.4 times 10 to the minus 3 feet cubed. So if I just divide those two to find the number of golf balls I expect inside of uh, 747, I find something like 1.7 times 10 to the 7. And so, interestingly enough, this is closer than a factor of 2 with all the estimates that we made. And that's the power of Fermi problems. So let me give you some guidelines on doing Fermi problems. Just while solving a Fermi problem, you probably shouldn't look up the quantities you don't know. Um, you should just go and make estimates based on what you do know. However, after you're solving a problem, you certainly should go and look up all the information you need to compute the real answer. Uh, and if you do that, your estimation skills will very quickly improve and you'll get uh, much better at solving Fermi problems. So, not all problems are the types of problems above. There's another type of problems, uh, which I might classify as physics Fermi problems. And these are problems that uh, require some uh, advanced knowledge, or basic knowledge rather, of physics. You need to know some physics in order to solve it. So an example of a physics Fermi problem might be, 
how many electrons pass through a MacBook, MacBook Air during the time it takes the laptop to consume a million joules. So how do we start a problem like this? Well, first, we do need to recall some basic concepts and equations from introductory physics. So in particular, we need to recall that current is charge per time, power is energy per time, and the power dissipated in a circuit uh, by some resistive element is the current times the voltage. Using that, we can figure out the thing we want. You can use dimensional analysis to figure out the quantity we want. Namely, uh, let's first say we want to find the charge in this amount of time. So the charge would be the current times the time. We can write the current as the power dissipated over the voltage. And we can write the time as the energy over the power. And canceling out factors of power, we get the charge is the energy over the voltage. Well, the extra step we need is that the number of electrons uh, that pass through the laptop is the charge, the total charge it passes through, uh, divided by the charge per electron. So now that we use dimensional analysis to set up our problem, now we need to make our estimates. The energy we're told is a million joules. The voltage coming out of the wall is around the order of 100 volts. And the charge per electron is something like 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And so the number of electrons that pass through the MacBook is the million joules divided by the 100 volts divided by 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, or something like 10 to the 23 electrons that pass through the MacBook Air. The actual number, if you use uh, about 45 watts of dissipated power for a typical MacBook Air, is 5.2 times 10 to the 22 electrons. And if you round that up, you get something like 10 to the 23. And so again, we see that the Fermi estimate gives us something that's pretty close to the uh, actual value within order, order of magnitude. And that's the value of doing Fermi problems and Fermi estimates.